All right, so welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. And last week we did a kind of a foundation for starting off with the manifestations of the Spirit or the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And today we'll be getting into that a little bit more and actually getting into a couple of the gifts of the Spirit. And so may the Lord open your heart, open your mind to these things to try to understand them um, biblically and spiritually. And has anybody, without explaining these two gifts yet, has anybody ever had an experience with what they believe is that they had a word of knowledge come to them? It was a word of knowledge about a person or about a Bible passage um, or about something, some spiritual thing, and you just knew something that you didn't know before, but the Holy Spirit just gave you that, either that insight or that ability to know something that you didn't know, even about somebody. And has anybody here ever had a word of knowledge? Okay, okay, so I see um, some hands going up, maybe six hands. Okay, now, seven there, there we go. And, and so, the other one is wisdom, that the Holy Spirit has, you know, kind of dropped into your heart the perfect answer for the moment. Like something came up, some situation, and other people would have been dumbfounded in how to answer, but you were asking God for his wisdom or for God to speak through you, and you just maybe just had a short sentence you said or whatever, but it was like, it just stumped everybody or it was like, it was like the perfect thing that was to be said in that situation, and it was God's wisdom. But you knew that it wasn't just your opinion, and it wasn't just your fast biblical thinking, it was definitely supernatural, it was from God, and it was a word of wisdom. So go ahead and lift your hand if you've ever had a word of wisdom. Okay, good. Okay, so, so we're familiar with these then, okay? And we want to learn about them from the Bible because we want to see God work in supernatural ways in our lives. And so let's go ahead and pray and let's ask God to move through his word and through us tonight. Okay, Lord, we ask you, Lord God, to have your own way with us. We ask you, Lord God, to open our spiritual eyes right now to behold spiritual truth and comparing it with what we know in the Bible, and then, Lord, what we know through our Christian experience. And so, Lord God, we pray that we would be properly instructed in the word, but we also pray, Lord, that it wouldn't only be the word without experience. We pray, Lord, that we'd be practicers, those who practice the word. And so, Lord God, help us now to whatever we're gonna see and know tonight, Lord God, help us to live it out, to experience it, and to experience gifts of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. So those two gifts are mentioned after this first verse, and we're gonna get into the first part first, and it is verse seven. But before I read verse seven, let's just go ahead and look at our Bibles, and we're gonna read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're gonna read one to six, and I went over this last week, and then we're gonna take a look at verse seven. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. And so we talked about that last week, not being ignorant about the spiritual gifts. And so that's why you're learning about them. It says, You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led, like voiceless idols that really aren't going to speak into your life. It says, Therefore, I make known to you I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit of God. And it's talking about a person who speaks by the Spirit of God. And, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight is the gifts, the manifestations of the Spirit, and a Christian letting the Holy Spirit speak through them. And, okay, on the one hand, you're not going to um, be saying false things about Jesus. And on the other hand, you're definitely going to be laying claim to Jesus as being the Lord of your life. And so that would be the the person that we would want to 
you know, listen to it. Somebody who's, who's trying to really follow the Lord here. And somebody who's speaking through the spirit of Jesus. And then it says in verse four, it says, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. And so the various kinds of gifts that God says that there are, but it's the same Holy Spirit working in everybody in the church. So as I'm looking at each of you tonight, the Holy Spirit wants to work in each one of his people. He wants to work in our hearts. He wants to work in our minds. He wants to work through his word. He wants to speak through our voice, and he wants us to minister about him in the world, but he also wants us to minister to one another in the church. So the Holy Spirit will use all of us. He'll use us individually, and he'll even use us as a group to be able to be effective for Jesus Christ. And so it says here in verse seven, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Now that word manifestation of the Spirit, if you've ever gone to a conference somewhere and maybe they have exhibits and they have boots and they have you know, signs that represent whatever their product is or if it's a Christian conference, whatever their mission is or whatever, and so you have the, the signs behind the table and then you have the table with the literature and, and, and with that, that's their exhibit. It's an exhibition of what they do and who they are. Now as Christians, we're not all standing behind a connect table with paperwork and a little sign that says, hey, you know, come to me, I'm Mr. and Mrs. Christian Connect, you know, for, um, for church. And yet we all are a connect table in the Lord. We are, all are a conduit of the Holy Spirit flowing through us, working through our minds, working through our personalities, working his word through us and working through our voice to others. And so, so we are exhibiting Jesus Christ. We are his letter read by all men. We are his radio listened to by all men. We are a present day Jesus Christ. The body of Christ is a present day Jesus Christ to the world because the spirit of Christ is in the body of Christ. And so each of us being a part of that body. So the manifestation of the Spirit is believers expressing themselves. Now, you know, some people, they feel like they've got to just be who they are, right? My personality, I'm just expressing myself, and, and so I'm really loud, and so you know I'm loud, or I'm just kind of a quiet person, and I'm shy, and so this is how I am, and, and I'm expressing myself. But as believers, it, it really isn't us so much that counts in, you know, sharing Christ with people. It's it's us, as Jesus was the express image of the invisible God, and, and so Jesus, of course, perfectly expressed the invisible God, and, and but us now, having been sent the Spirit of God, and each of us having that Spirit of Christ in us, and so now we are an expression of what God will do through us. And so what will or what won't God do through us? What would he even hold back? Because he wants to minister to the world, and he wants to minister to our brother and sister that we are a part of with, in a church family. And so he wants to take each one of us individually, but, but as a church, to be an expression of himself and to show, it says, the manifestation of the Spirit in verse 7. The expression of the Spirit. Are you expressing the Spirit in your life? Is there anything, is there any light shining? Is there anything being produced and coming forth that is showing the power of Jesus in you and through you. And so the life of a believer being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, the life of a born-again believer, Christian man or woman, being open and yielded to the Holy Spirit using them is very important. You have an important place in God's kingdom. You are a significant person. And God specifically wants to use you in certain people's lives and also in the overall atmosphere of the church he wants to use you, and in his overall commission in getting the word out, he wants to use you. So he is going to shine through you, speak through you, he is going to express himself through you, but not forcefully. It's gonna be as you've opened your heart and you've allowed the Holy Spirit to have his own way in you. 
If you quench the Holy Spirit, he'll be held back. If you greed the Holy Spirit, saddening his heart because you're always being disobedient to the word, well, then you're holding the Holy Spirit back. But if you're wanting to be filled with the Spirit of God, Lord, fill me today. Lord, fill me today. I want to be filled. And when you're filled with the Holy Spirit of God, he is going to bubble out of you. He's going to be like rivers of living water poured forth from you. There is going to be the flow of God, the source of God, the life of God, the gifts of God, the heart of God, the love of God, the fruit. All of that is going to flow from you. You will be an expression of his son or daughter that represents him, represents his family, represents the kingdom of God, so the manifestation of the Spirit. Now, it's saying here of the Spirit. It doesn't say of the Father, you know, as, you know, one of the cult groups call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses, right? We're, we're a witness of Jehovah. And whereas I, I see in Scripture, the book of Acts, is that they were, they were Jesus' witnesses. But in this particular case, it's not talking about an expression of Jesus or an expression of the Father, even though we are becoming Christ-like, but it, there, there's going to be a manifestation of God. And people are going to see God and experience God through you. You know, God sometimes seems so far off to people, so intangible, so untouchable, so inaccessible, even though we understand there is a way that has been made for us to get to God, and the access is through the blood of Christ. But still, even with that, you know, though one rise from the dead, will they believe? People still won't believe, right? But when they see you, and they see your openness, and your kindness, and your love, and your ability to speak the word, and your ability to be sensitive to the Spirit of God, what is he saying to me? What's he saying to me about them right now? How should I listen to them? What, in, instead of just catching trigger words that they're saying, what are they saying? Am I answering a matter before I've heard it? Am I, you know, just venting everything I have to say? Or am I really listening? So I'm going, Lord, I'm not going to give them a, a, a pat answer, a Christian band-aid. I'm not going to just say the things that anybody says. I want your knowledge in this situation. I want to hear what they're saying, but I want to really hear what they're saying. And I want to then have your wisdom, and I, I want to speak into them. And so to speak into somebody, if you don't want to speak into somebody, you're not going to speak into somebody. But if you want to speak into people in the body of Christ or even somebody in the world, and you want to give them a word from the Lord, then that means you've got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You've got to be open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You've got to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You've got to just let the Holy Spirit, it's got to be of the Spirit. Because you know that you know how to be of the flesh, You've known that forever, how to be of the flesh. And so that of the flesh part here has to be buffeted, put under, crucified, whatever you want to call it, mortified. And, and it's got to be, you know, dealt with, rectified, reckoned dead, all of that. And I'm going, no, it's not me. It's not about me. It's not about living for myself. It's not, not about everything I wish and doing everything I want. I want my life to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want it to be him expressed and seen and known. And we fight that because we like us and we like our things and the things that we like and what we're into and what we waste our time on. We like all of that. And so to be used as a conduit for God, as a vessel that's poured into and poured out of, as a salt shaker that becomes the salt shaker of the earth, to say, Lord, here I am. Pour me out. Let me bring flavor. Let me bring preservation, let me bring salvation, let me bring, you know, the, the heart of God to people. And, and so it isn't a professional ministry thing. Well, you know, when people go to church, they can sense God. When they go to church, they can hear the word of God and they can decide whether God is true or not. No, no. It, it is him sending the body of Christ out there and also using the body of Christ in here. And so if you're coming to church only for yourself, then you're into Christian survival. And that must mean that either you're brand new in the faith or you're so far gone that you just need to survive and, and you've never quite, you know, gotten an idea about walking with God, even though you know that's the right thing. And, and because the people who walk with the Lord, the people who are going to walk in gifts of the Holy Spirit are people that want God to use them, people that want God 
to bless others through them. And so you are not just this person that doesn't have a purpose. You're not just this person that lives your life as an island unto himself and you feel like, wow, I'm so ineffective. Wow, my life hasn't really counted for very much. No, you're not gonna think thoughts like that. You're gonna say, here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am, Lord, speak something into me right now so I can say something to them right now that will be eternally significant and, and cause me to be living out my purpose in this life. See, our purpose in this life was not just meant for our own self, and I'm not talking about self is all bad, but our own self need. It isn't meant that it's just my family and my job and the food on my table and the things that we do, going to kids' parties and you know vacations. and it, It's not really just that. That's all part of life, but God's saying you gotta not, not neglect the one. You don't neglect your family, but you don't leave the other undone. You don't leave the church in the dust over here. Now, the majority of people in today's world um, don't care about the church. The majority of Christians, um, you know, unless there's some, you know, group peer pressure kind of a thing, but the majority of Christians don't even, of the younger generation at least, don't care in the sense that it's how they feel and when they feel like it with, with church. But when we are wanting to be somebody whom the Lord has bought with a price, and so we are not our own. We belong to him. And when we are recognizing that, that he is Lord over our lives, he is ruler, his banner over us is you are Lord. And so, so if he is Lord, then that means I'm gonna go forth in his name. I'm gonna go forth in his name and doing the things that he wants me to do, the works that he wants me to do. And all along the way, as you're stepping out in faith or half faith or whatever you're doing, you're stepping out, the devil's trying to pull you down Devil's trying to pull you down. He's trying to hinder you. He's trying to slow you down. He's trying to cause you to feel like I'm ineffective. He's trying to cause you to feel like you know, you're, you're really not counting and you're really not gonna be used to the Lord. But that's where you realize that you can do nothing apart from him and that you need to be filled. And Lord, this has gotta be you. It's gotta be you. I can't figure life out. I can't figure life and home or ministry, or work, or anything. I can't figure it out, Lord, apart from you supernaturally giving me words, speaking things into my spirit, and things that I can also encourage others with. Have you ever encouraged somebody else with something that the Lord encouraged you with? And that's a really big deal to be able to do that because your, your, your spirit is quickened. Your inner man is like alive to the Lord, it's going on in, inside of you. And so you can't just hold it back and, and keep it just you know, trembling in your bones. You gotta just go, wow, oh, Lord, I, I just, I could not restrain my lips. You know, people always say, I, well, I just had to say it. No, you didn't. <laughs> you just didn't have self-control. That was mean that you said it. No, no, as Christians, we should be saying, I just had to say it. And we just had to say it because we just had to say it because it was burning in our bones. It was just something that God was trying to you know, bring forth from us and so we couldn't restrain our lips. So let's learn through the gifts of the Holy Spirit not to hold back from God. In marriage, in the book of Corinthians, it tells a husband and a wife the husband is not to deprive his wife. The wife is not to deprive her husband. And it means they're not to hold back from one another in the marriage bed. They're not to deprive one another. Nice way of the Bible saying that, right? But I would say that we hold back and we deprive the Lord of fully us. Lord, you can have 50% of me today, next day. You can have 25% of me today. Okay, Lord, you guess what? You get another 5%. You got 30% of me today. Now, real awesome day at church. Oh, you got 80% of me. Hallelujah. Mm, man, I can almost, almost speak in tongues. 80%. But every day has got to be a Jesus day. Every day has got to be a gift of the Holy Spirit day. A manifestation 
of the Spirit. Not a manifestation of John or Raul or Sandra. A manifestation of the Spirit. And so then we've got to be in tune and in touch with the Holy Spirit. Because it says there in verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. That means no one's left out, no one's left behind. No one's like, well, God, what about me? I, I want to be used too. No, you are. You, you, you just need to, right now, just be open and say, Lord, I, I fully want to be used. Take me and use me. And I'm going to tell you what, Jesus said the poor you have with you always, I mean, right there, there's enough problems going on that you can be used, right? But you start off with something that's obvious to you and something that you know is biblically significant, you know, the widow or the orphan or whatever, you know, the, the people in need kind of situation is. And then from there, the Lord knows he's got you. So it's like, oh yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna do what the word says? Then I'm gonna drop all kinds of other things into your heart. I see that you're movable, that I can, I can you know, run this running engine into my will because you're, you're open. And, and so, so we're open to the written will of God and then we're open to the spiritually led will of God and the things that the Holy Spirit will, will guide us into because he's in us. And so the Spirit was sent by Jesus Christ in um, John chapter 16, John chapter 16 and verse seven. And it says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. Now the word advantage means it's a helpful thing to you that I go away, Jesus says. Now, what are we thinking? Jesus, you're going away is helpful to me? I don't think so, Jesus, I want you. you know. But he's saying, it's, he's saying it's so, so it must be so. It's to your advantage, it's expedient if I go away. If I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. How is the Holy Spirit convicting the world of sin in a big way? Is it just that he's only using man's conscience? Is it just that the Spirit of God is blowing throughout the earth and, and making everybody feel guilty of their sin? How is he convicting the world? But you know, the word of God, when, when Stephen spoke before the Sanhedrin, it says they, they were convicted. And, and there is something about when Christians are walking with the gospel and, and sharing the Lord, the world is convicted. And they're convicted of their sin, they're convicted of their need for righteousness, the righteousness of Christ, and they're convicted of a judgment to come, that someday you're gonna stand before God and you're gonna give an account for whether you were one of his or not. And so, so the Holy Spirit he says, I will send the Spirit, because see, Jesus was one person in time, living in a man's body, and he could only do so much. But he said, greater works you will do than these, and the reason is, is because there's gonna be more of you. There's gonna be a few thousand year period of time, so there's gonna be more time. So more of you, with more time, with all the sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, and allowing God to use him, the church has done it's greater works over time in contrast to just the few miracles that Jesus did in his lifetime. And because there's so many more of us and it's him through us, him through his body. And so thank God that we get to have the Holy Spirit. It has been to our advantage. And so we all as a body of believers get to bear like like the guy that was um, Simon the Cyrenian that had to bear the cross beam for Jesus, we all get to bear the burden of the church and the world together, the, the kingdom of God together, by God filling us with his spirit and then speaking through us with his spirit. And when it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse seven, it says each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. Every man, woman, and child that is a part of his kingdom has some sort of a gift, has some role, some niche, some share in the kingdom. 
of something that they will be doing to honor and to glorify God. Now, we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that the church was coming together, but it says you're not coming together for the better because you're coming and you should be eating in your homes, but you're taking at the communion meal, and it's, it was a meal, and you're eating all the food and you're making pigs of yourself. And that's what one of the translations said. They're making pigs of themselves. And, and then all of them say, and, and some of you are getting drunk. Like they would come and the, the wine at the communion, they were getting drunk on somebody else's dollar. He says, so you're not coming together for the better, but you're coming together for the worse. Now, how do you come together for the better? And, and one of the ways that it says that we come together for the better is that each one has a gift that the Holy Spirit is using the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit is using the church. And I will tell you that when we do come together, there is nothing that can hold you back. There is no pastor that can hold you back. It says that a man's gift will make room for him because the gift is bubbling out of you and you can't stop it. So if you've got a word from the Lord, it's not gonna be the pastor saying, well, now, after I've taught my 45-minute Bible study, we're going to have a half an hour for all of you to go around and tell people who you got a word for and speak your word from the Lord for them because I'm giving you time to do that. Me? Giving you time to do that? What a laugh. That is something that you could know, that you couldn't stop yourself. You couldn't restrain your lips. You were at home and you were getting that word for that sister. You were in your devotions in the morning and the Holy Spirit came upon you and told you something to say. And then you came up to pastor before church started and you said, pastor, I got this total word, really crisp and clear from the Holy Spirit. Here's what it is, do you, do you bear witness with this? And um, you know, because I'd like to share it. And I'll tell you what, you know, if it's not like that one lady in that church I talked about last week that I used to go to, and she was the only one, it was an assembly of God, but she was the only one that spoke in tongues and you know, it would be like she w would always get up and there she is, she's speaking in tongues. Now she might have been the most spiritual lady in the church. Who knows? But I mean the young people always said, there she goes. You know, all the young people thought there's that one tongue speaker in that assembly of God there. And, but regardless of a false reputation or not and even people thinking that you're weird when you're really truly spiritual, We've each got a gift. We can each affect one another. We can be profitable for the body of Christ and profitable to the world for the Lord. And we can let the Lord work through us all of his ways and all of his says, everything he says. And um, he, he works through, through each one. And God's eternal plan is to do what? It's to win the world and to edify the body of Christ. Right, He's building us up into the stature of Christ. Win the world, edify the body of Christ. That's the two biggest things that are going on right now. Now, everything falls under the category of edify, serving, loving, everything. Win the world has everything to do with the Great Commission and feeding and all of those kind of things to win people, outreach. Body of Christ, world, that's God's eternal plan. Are you coming in line with God's eternal plan or does it just seem too big to you? I'm just one insignificant person. Or have I believed God enough to say I'm one significant person who can be filled with the Holy Spirit? I'm one significant, insignificant person in my own eyes because sometimes some of these guys that were chosen were insignificant in their own eyes but the Lord chose the smallest, the youngest, the ugliest and whatever it was that he, he chose something to, to make beauty out of ashes. He chose something to show that this is my handiwork. I mean, even Jesus Christ himself, it said, had no form nor comeliness. Like he wasn't attractive to people in this world. And you might not have anything that attracts people to you except for the fact that you're shining the light of the Lord. So every single person According to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it mentions the word all. I want you to read 1 Corinthians 14, verse 31. It says, for you can all prophesy one by one. 
that all may learn and all may be encouraged. You see the word all three times, right? All prophesy, all may learn, all may be encouraged. All getting involved in speaking a word of prophecy one by one. Eric, speak a prophecy. <laughs> okay? Marta, speak a prophecy. One by one. Can you be on the spot for the Lord? Can you be ready in season, out of season? Can you just jump to it and like all of a sudden, boom, you know? Sometimes when we are waiting on the Lord during an afterglow, the Lord only gives you a picture or one word and you're like, I don't know what that is. And then you, you speak it out and it begins to come together in something that the Lord is saying and you kick back after that and going, whoa, how did the Lord do that through me? But he said something really clear and something totally of the spirit. Now, I know how afterglows go. You'll have, you know, so many things that happen and some of them seem really spot on, really good, and the other ones, you know, sometimes you're like, well, okay, well, it's just encouragement. It's encouragement because the Bible says a lot of it's encouragement. And, and so you, you, you look at it and you judge it according to, you know, what you received from it or what you think the church got edified from it. But the one thing that I'll say about it is that everybody who spoke out, at least they spoke out. At least they stepped out. At least they were willing to have God use them. And, and who are we to correctly judge as far as knowing what the Lord exactly did? Because we can't see into the heart of everybody, can we? So we don't really know the secret works of God that were mystically and supernaturally going on among the group as just something simple or plain or some ordinary encouragement happened. And yet it was like profound and, and of the Lord, of the Spirit. So everybody could prophesy one by one. And so God's plan for the body is that everybody in the body will be used one by one. Not none by none, but one by one, as it says in 1 Corinthians 14, 31. And then in Ephesians chapter four, verse 16, and, and please read this with me. Ephesians chapter four, verse 16. It says, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. God's plan for the body is that the body will grow into the stature of Christ. That the body will be edified through us walking in love and lovingly speaking to one another and, and pouring into each other. Anybody could bark into each other, you know, hey, do this, or you didn't do this. But, wow, what if we get words from the Lord? What if? What if, what if it's like, thus saith the Lord. I am speaking not of myself. You know how Paul would say that sometimes? But it's the Spirit who's speaking in me. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. Then other times you'd say, well, this is me, but I also believe I have the Spirit of God. So you had like a confidence level of the Lord speaking through him. But that we can pour into everybody. So then when you hear something from um, Pastor John, Pastor Sean, Pastor Rawl, or Eric, or anybody, and you're going, wait a second, this isn't just them speaking. It's not just their tone of voice. This could be the Spirit speaking. Am I being lazy? Should I be doing more for God? Am I messing up in some way? Now, obviously, you can judge yourself and go say you're doing fine and all that kind of stuff, but I, I'm saying that sometimes the sensitivity level is sometimes God will want to stretch us way beyond who we are and way beyond even what we think we can do and, and just to show that, you know what, you're my handiwork. You're my poem that I'm writing. You're my beauty that I'm spreading throughout the church and the aroma of life that I'm spreading to the world. You are it. And, um, and so sometimes we need to hear a word from the Lord. Now, sometimes, you know, the, the Bible says to every hungry soul, to, to a hungry soul, every, every bitter thing is sweet. And, you know, I, I picture a seagull over the beach and, you know, you just shoot up a rubber band and it will swallow it. Oh, 
you know, because they're just ready to eat anything. That's, if you ever see dead seagulls on the beach from rubber bands, that was me. No, I'm kidding. I never did that. But, but every bitter thing is sweet. Some of you might be swallowing some rubber bands, okay, um, of the world and the lies of the enemy. And, you know, but, but at the same time, when you're open to the Lord, like you get things. You know, when I'm, I have all these little spiritual secrets, okay? Um, but like I have the Our Daily Bread app, right? And I believe every Christian should have the Our Daily Bread app on their phone for sure. And because I, I'm able to interchange, you know? I've, I've got my morning and evening Spurgeon devotionals. I've got my one year Bible every day. And so I've got all this stuff going on, but like before I go to bed, I might not want to read the daily bread, but I, sometimes I'll just read the scripture, you know, that they give. And, and I, I know some of you get those um, daily scriptures sent to your phone, you know, things like that. We're not treating it like a horoscope. We're not treating it like, okay, I got my little magic word here. But I'm telling you, God's word is powerful and sharper than a double-edged sword and pierces the thoughts and the intents of our heart. And so because his word is powerful, if we're gravitating toward his word and we're wanting his word, we get words from the Lord. I, I, so many times, even before I've fallen asleep, I've gotten a word from the Lord that, in from whatever that scripture was, it just summed up my whole day or summed up my whole um, sinful nature or summed up my whole um, hopes and prayers and future or, or whatever it was that, you know, the, the, the note that I was, you know, trying to get something from the Lord on. And I, and I just always am, am blessed in some way because the Lord speaks. But then it happens at church too, doesn't it? Or it happens in scripture too, that somebody gives you a scripture. And, and so God uses the body of Christ to be the mouth, the prophecy, the mouthpiece of God to one another. And sometimes we need that tangible word from a brother that just says, you know, because I had this one recently, okay? And I'm not kidding you. Oh my gosh. It was like just insane over the last few weeks, okay? Okay, so you know that something's of God when it's not like normal, right? It's just happening like again and again. And I have different people and you know, God told me to say that he loves you. Somebody else texted me. God said to say he loves you. Somebody write to me. God said to say he loves you. I had like, I don't know, like seven God loves you over a week, but it was like I really wanted to hear that. I really needed to hear that, you know, and I really, and, and it was like, it was constant. And like, I don't have any God loves you the week or two before that. I didn't have any the month before that. All of a sudden, it's like everybody's saying God loves you, you know, and I was um, you know, and, and I love it because like I have my, my daughter, she said she was up and she was going through some thoughts and everything. It was three in the morning recently and, and somebody sent her a message. God laid you on my heart. I'm praying for you right now. And, um, and she had just turned on that message or whatever just at that time and like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I need from the Lord. And, and there's a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Can you? Can I? Can we be open? Can we be more spiritually inclined? And I absolutely believe so. And it says the edifying of itself in love in Ephesians 4.16. The body's just being built up in all of the good things of God. Now, another point on the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. By the time I'm done, you should have verse seven memorized. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. Joel, the book of Joel, chapter two, the prophecy that comes into the book of Acts when the Holy Spirit fell on the church, Peter preached Joel. And it says in Joel 2, 28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Just in case somebody thinks that the scripture that talks about women being silent in the church um, in 1 Corinthians 14 means that they couldn't prophesy. It had to mean something entirely different because the scripture was clear. You could all prophesy one by one. And 
Peter was very clear that your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Philip's, the, the first de- one of the first deacons of the church, his seven daughters, it says, all prophesied. So absolutely, God speaks equally through men and women. And it's not that you know, you're going, are you really saying that in this day and age? Pastor John, of course everybody knows that. Well, I'm gonna tell you that um, maybe still in a lot of men's minds, they don't know that. So it's important to say that yes, you may all prophesy one by one. And it shall come to pass that I'm gonna put out my spirit on flesh, your sons and daughters are gonna prophesy, your old men are gonna dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And you know what was really neat? Is somebody called me today and they said, I had this dream with you in it last night and you were in the living room but you were going to the airport but you were, and then Maureen came and she said this to everybody and blah, blah, blah. And it like had everything to do with me trying to buy my tickets to go to Texas, you know, I'm like going, hey, that's really interesting. And, um, but, it, but it's, you know, sometimes things are spot on, sometimes they're kind of iffy or sometimes they're kind of like, I don't know, it's like one of those UFO Christian experiences. It's somewhere out there, I don't know what it is or what it means, but maybe it's of God. I understand that it's hard to tack these things down sometimes. But sometimes when you get a word from the Lord, is it just like refreshing and stimulating and and heartfelt and you're blessed? And so it says, your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Now notice he says, I will. The Lord will do it. He will give manifestations. He will do this on each one. He will be in the church, he will be for the church, and he will help the church to be used in gifts of the Spirit so we are each contributing members in the body of Christ. And we're not just doing our independent Christian thing. The Bible teaches about the body of Christ actually operating like a human body. And just like if there's damage to a body, all of the pain goes to that area and also the cells for healing go to that area. And so the, the scriptures teach in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 25. It says in 1 Corinthians 12, 25 that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. So each member having care for each other Verse 26, and if one member suffers, ouch, all the members suffer, ooh, sorry, pray for you, ouch, with it. Or if one member is honored, hallelujah, praise God, you graduated, you had a baby, you got married, all the members rejoice with it. The body has to learn to be the body. The body has to find its niche in being the body. Each individually looking out for these things. I know I might seem naturally inclined to looking out for these things. I'm naturally inclined towards selfishness. I've had to learn over the years to be observant and to remember that not just my things are important to me, everybody's things are important to them. And so I have to suffer with you. I have to rejoice with you. And we have to remember that because we're all in the body and we're all subject to these sufferings and rejoicings. And so therefore, just as we want people to come alongside of us, we need to come alongside of others. And we can't forget that. It's a very important part of being a part of the body. And you can make a choice of what part of the body do you want to be. Do you want to be a cancer cell or do you want to be a good white cell? You know, which one? And it's kind of a choice, depending on, you know, if you commit yourself to the Lord and you want to add health to the body and healing to the body, or do you want to add whatever, you know, that a a bad cell might add. And, And so the way we add good to the body is by being encouraging, by being prayerful, by being helpful, by using our hands to bless people, by using our time to bless people, by paying attention to people, by loving on people by using whatever God has bestowed in me to bestow it upon you. So the spirit is the power inside of us. He is the strength of God. 
manifested in the church, to the church, and to the world for his glory and all of it through his gifts through us. Got that? And so are you ready? Are you ready to manifest the glory of Christ? Because it says in John 2.11, the beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Like if, if we manifest his glory, people will believe in Jesus. Isaiah 66 verse 12, it says, for thus says the Lord, behold, I want you to see something. I want you to see what I'm gonna do. He says, behold, Isaiah 66, 12, I will, and what will God do? I will extend peace to her like a river. I'm gonna extend to her the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. And then my people, she, Israel, but my people, are gonna feed, you know, like, like a shepherd in green pastures. And on her sides shall you be carried. Like, I'm gonna make sure that you're taken care of, you're feeding, you're carried, and you're gonna be dandled on her knees, meaning that you're gonna be well taken care of. And then it says, as one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. And that's what God will do. I will comfort you. And you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. When you see this, when you see the manifestations of God in your life, your heart will rejoice. And your bones are gonna flourish like grass. And the hand of the Lord shall be known to you, his servants. And, and so all of that scripture in Isaiah 66 is, look at the glory of God. Look at God will do through his people, through his church. Look at how he'll comfort them and flow through them and minister to them and put peace in them and, and, and just carry them and all of that, all of those beautiful things that God will do by the spirit in your life, by the spirit of God moving through you and, and, and giving that comfort to others. And is it by you, because you'll get tired. You'll get worn out on the church. You'll get worn out on people. If it's, if it's you, we get worn out. But if it's by the Spirit, then it's not our own might. It's not our own strong arm. It's us leaning into God, and it's him doing it through us. In Psalm 44, and I, I want you all to read this one, okay? Psalm 44, verses two to four. This is a scripture that the Lord gave me, like we'll say the first year that we were at church, okay? And it was a verse that he gave me for the church. This is to first love. I don't know exactly how God, you know, when we get to heaven, will say that this was for us, but this is a, a verse to us, not just individually, but to us as a church. Oh, is that the wrong one? Um, no, it is the right one. Okay, good. Okay, so Psalm 44. It says, but you, but them you planted. Do you see the end of verse um, two there, them you planted? Do you see that planted part? Okay. So how did he plant his people? in a kingdom, he planted the seed of the word in us, he planted us as a church, so he planted us. He planted your butt right there in that seat to get some roots right there. Bear root, get downward and bear fruit upward, okay? You ever hear that one before? It's in the Bible, I just reworded it to fit a, fit a, um, a chair, okay? So, but them, you planted, the Lord planted us. We're here because God has us here. Verse three, for they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arm save them. There we go. Not by might, nor by power. Not by our own might, not by our own power. It says, because you favored them, because your hand was upon them, because your grace was upon them. That's what favor means. It, it's, the word do is the word favor. And as the dew comes down and waters the grass, that God is saying, your favor, my favor is upon you. It, it was not your might or your power. He says, you are my king, O God. Command victories for Jacob. Now, the main part was um, verses, verse three actually was the main part was for our church, okay? So if you want to know what the, I, I tied into it, verse two, and tied into it, verse four. But one of the things I want to say about verse four is that he commands victories. 
the word victories there is not just like conquering victory. It's talking about healings, it's talking about prosperity, and it's talking about deliverance. And that the, the command there is that he will call it into our lives. He will send healings, prosperity, and victory, um, deliverance into our lives. And, and that's what it was speaking of for his people, for the nation of Israel. Now, if we want to personalize that, it would be whatever we're going through and whatever we need. And so I, what I love about that verse is it's not just victory in Jesus, my Savior forever, but I get one victory in Jesus I mean, praise God for that one victory, but, but it, it's so nice to see the S on the end of it, isn't it? And it's victories in Jesus, not victory, but victories. There's gonna be lots of different kinds of healings, lots of different kinds of prospering, and lots of different times of deliverance that the Lord is gonna send, command, send to me and to you. And... The, the Bible says in um, 1 Timothy 1.12, it says in 1 Timothy 1.12, I, I, thank, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me. Do you know what the word enabled there means? He's empowered me. You know how you get these women's groups and they're all like the women together, we are empowered, we're women that are empowered, you know, to you know, be journalists and <clears throat> show what a woman can do in this world, we're empowered. Well, as Christians, I mean, th that's all nice for making the world work and all that kind of stuff, but we're more concerned about making the kingdom work, right? And we've got more than woman power, okay? We've got Holy Spirit power. And it says, I thank Jesus, the Lord, who has empowered me. He's increased my strength. He's made me strong to do his will. It says, because he counted me faithful, and he put me into the ministry, Although I was formerly a blasphemer, even though I was this dork, he did it. It's him. He enabled me and put me in there. Praise God, right? And so he can bring forth words from the Lord from you if he empowered you. He can bring forth the gifts of spirit by his spirit from you because he empowered you. And you can be the exhibition and the expression and the demonstration of God through his spirit, through you, to the church and to the world. And then guess what? The final part of that verse, and then um, I'll have to get to those other two, but listen, the final part of that verse in verse seven, let's get there, verse seven. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all, for the betterment of the body of Christ, that God has given us super great power and he's given us super marvelous power, whether it's discerning of spirits or whether it's prophecy or whether it's helping somebody. That God has equipped the church to do the work that the church needs to do to love on one another and to love the world for him. The church was meant to operate properly by each one having a gift. Not wasting our time worrying about our own advancement and progress and our own shortcomings, but by being that car that has the engine on that the Lord can make it move. Not being the one that has the car in the sand that's trying to get out of the sand and it's just, you know, and, the, and it's spinning its wheels, but the Spirit is moving on us to move, to move and to shake in this world for him, to cause kingdoms to shake to progress, to bring progress to the body of Christ and to speak to mountains in Jesus' name and see, be thou removed. All you do is you just tell that mountain, be thou moved. And Jesus says that it's going to move. I mean, that's the kind of faith that he says we should have. So there is a great advantage of him leaving the spirit and the church learning to operate in the spirit. A spirit-filled believer brings a lot of good to the table when they're operating their gifts to glorify Christ. God has brought us together, not purpose, purposelessly, but he's brought us together to be profitably, to, to bring forth great and mighty things and to um, be, we'll just say, cooperating with the Holy Spirit 
to build the body of Christ. You know, our Vacation Bible School is about construction and building. And we are going to be those spiritual architects that are building up lives around us and making our church stronger so that way the world that's in the sphere of our church can know Jesus Christ. And then 1 Corinthians 14, 26. 1 Corinthians 14, 26. How is it then, brethren? How is it then, Lisa, Ronnie, and Louie, and Kevin? How is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, and you over there, you have the teaching, you have a tongue, and you have a revelation, and you have an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. In other words, you've come and gathered together to benefit the body of Christ, to be profitable not just to yourself, but to the whole. And so we're thinking, what can I bring to the table? What can I add to the overall prosperity of our church? And Paul says, what shall I profit you unless I come to you, either by revelation or knowledge or prophesying or teaching? Like, I I'm gonna come to you with something that can bless you, where I can be in a mutual encouragement to you and, and, and you to me. And he said in 1 Corinthians 14, 12, he says, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Do you want to be a believer that goes beyond the beyond of where you have gone before? Seek to excel. And then verses 8 and 9 in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 8 says, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, and to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit. God is saying, I'm going to give you exact wisdom that you need to answer a matter to even shut somebody's mouth. Remember Jesus said, give me a coin. Should we pay taxes to Caesar? Give me a coin. Whose picture's on it? Ah, Caesar's. Well then, give to Caesar that which belongs to Caesar. Give to God that which belongs to God. Supernatural wisdom that answered the moment. And God can give you the perfect decision that no one else could make. Like how they had to make a decision um, and they go, well, pick out from among, among you seven men of good reputation. You know, and they can serve the tables. Where did that come from? First Corinthians, uh, Acts chapter 15. They, you know, get together and they have the Jerusalem council and they decide, okay, you know what? The Gentiles don't need to know about circumcision. They just need to know about not offending the Jews and not being immoral. And so here's a few things they need to know. Pass it on to them. And it said it seemed good to us and to the Holy Spirit to tell you these things. So in other words, the Holy Spirit gives wisdom to the church through either leaders or church members. And he gives, you know, a perfect idea for a situation. Sometimes it's a little bit of wisdom. Sometimes it's a lot of wisdom. Um, Jesus Christ in your heart, it says that he is the wisdom of God. There's a verse that says that he is the wisdom of God. So if he's in you, that means you've got all of the words of wisdom that you could ever need if you look to him. And his most foolish of wisdom, the leastest of his wisdom that might appear foolish to somebody else is, um, let's see, the verse in Corinthians, that the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And so meaning the thing that you say that might even seem like the simplest answer to the situation was wiser than anybody. It, it might have been a, a Gump, a Forrest Gump comment. But man, it was a Holy Spirit comment because everybody else thought they needed all the wisdom of this world, but they couldn't put it back together again. But you just stood back and you just saw the most sensible thing, but it wasn't just your common sense or your personality or your little ways of figuring it out. It was the Holy Spirit wisdom that was imparted to you at that moment for you didn't need to think of what you had to say for the Holy Spirit gave you what to say at that very moment. And so when you're talking during fellowship and you hear somebody says something and they're stumped about something in, in their life, and rather than trying to tell them everything that you know, here's everything I've ever learned. Here's the answer to your question. No, you're, Lord, help me not to put them in a box and everybody that deals with sexual morality, I just give them these verses. And everybody that deals with anger, I just give them these verses. No, they're a unique person. Their situation is unique. Holy Spirit, what are you saying through me right now to them? And so the Holy Spirit has something 
that a counselor doesn't have, that they might end up paying 100 to 150 per session. You had it and you were free. You know, because the Holy Spirit is like, freely you've received, freely give. And the, the Holy Spirit has the perfect word for the predicament. For serious things, he has a perfect word. Something that is beyond the reach of others, but it's a Holy Spirit thing in that hour. This one guy used to ask me to speak at his young adults retreats, and he always liked the Q&A. And he said that because he thought that I really shined in the Q&A. Because these young people would ask me all these questions, and I just was like, always just had like this Holy Spirit answer. And so there's some things that we can shine in, right, at times. And, um, but I would say, because even when I would step back and look and go, wow, that was a good answer. It wasn't just a good answer, it was the right answer. It was like the perfect answer. But do you know what that was? That was the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And that was just like the Lord putting it together and just speaking through me. And, and, and God will do that through any of us and all of us. He can do that because he's God. And we've got the Holy Spirit in us. And we've got gifts in us. And he wants to manifest that to the church and to the world. And you will be used by the Spirit. I'm gonna close with just a word of wisdom because I'm not getting into the word of knowledge obviously at the moment, but the Bible says just for gifted artisans that were putting together the tabernacle, it says, I have filled them with the spirit of wisdom. Have you ever asked to be filled with the spirit of wisdom? And then Joshua, the son of Nun, who was the assistant to Moses, was full of the spirit of wisdom. I think Stephen was full of the spirit of wisdom too in the New Testament. And Isaiah chapter 11, verse two, it says the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him and the spirit of wisdom and understanding. That was upon the Savior. So if the spirit of wisdom was on the Savior, the spirit of wisdom will also be on us and the spirit of the wisdom is the Holy Spirit of wisdom. And then um, one last scripture on that topic is um, Ephesians 1.17. And it says that God, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. We're not gonna know it all and we're not gonna have it all down but we're gonna have some Holy Spirit moments and we're gonna have some Holy Spirit words coming out of our mouths that God's, when we're saying, Lord, I need, I need a word of wisdom right now, Lord. The Lord's gonna give you a word of wisdom.